Okay, welcome to the unboxing of the Growler Works UKEG Nitro. This was a Kickstarter that uh, is basically a version of their beer kegs, their pressurized beer kegs, that is intended to dispense nitro coffee. And if you're not familiar with nitro coffee, well, you are missing out because it basically is uh, amazing. Uh, it's a very creamy way to serve coffee without using creamer because it is infused with nitrogen bubbles that make it look like a Guinness. And uh, if you're not a drinker, such as I am not, then uh, it helps you make you look like an adult uh, when you're drinking it uh, around the people who do. Anyway, I am assuming that this is the top of the box, the reason being that on the bottom are the parts of the box that you might otherwise expect to be the bottom because of the labeling of the box itself. So, here we go. There are a lot of stuff clinking around in there. Check my angles. Looks good. Okay. Ah. Here we are. Packing slip. UKEG Nitro Owner's Manual. Holds 12 cups of coffee. And let's see what we've got here. Welcome to your new UK Nitro Cold Brew Coffee Maker. Now you can make, store, and pour Nitro Cold Brew Coffee wherever life takes you. This manual will help you keep the UK Nitro in perfect working order and will give you helpful tips to be your own professional barista. Oh yeah. So yes, I'm reading that upside down so I can hold it up to the camera for you. Uh, we will worry about the actual instructions in a bit. In the meantime, let's see what is in the box. We have a pack of Nitro Chargers. These are Growler Works branded Nitro Chargers. They are not pure nitrogen, however. They are actually nitrous oxide. N2O and basically these are similar to what you would find in a, uh, a whipping uh, cream canister. Uh, looks like they included five of them. I thought we were supposed to get more of those because of a stretch goal but I'll have to double check the stretch goal. But I thought we were supposed to get more than just five. Although I suppose it's possible that there are more inside the main box and that these are from the stretch goal. What else do we have here? We have inside a baggie. Ah, yes. You may not be able to see it too well because it's black, but this is a Kickstarter exclusive uh, keg tap handle with the Kickstarter logo. Uh, the circle with the big fat K on it. I don't know if I'm going to use that. We'll see. Actually, it's uh, it's pretty hefty. That's that's better made than I expected it to be. And it looks like it came with a small Allen key to attach that to the keg. So we will set that aside. And what else do we have here? Uh. Well, this appears to be some kind of loose part. I'm not sure what that is yet. We will find out. And in addition to whatever that is, uh, it's another tool of some kind. Um, each section of the tool is labeled. 
to indicate its use, or perhaps this is a guide for where the different parts fit on the keg. I guess we will find that out as we put it together. This loose piece that was in the larger baggie, I think I will put in here with this multi-tool looking part. If I can get the baggie open. There we go. I'm just going to plop that in there. And there we go. I will set that aside. The only other box in here appears to be for the keg itself. As you can see, the actual shipping box is now empty. So here we have the actual U-Keg Nitro box. Um, it is a, I think what they call black chrome color. And when I describe the Nitro Coffee as looking like Guinness, well, you can see what I mean by that once you start uh, pouring coffees uh, using the built-in tap. Uh, it, it really does look like you're, you're pouring a, a nice stout beer. So let's get this open. Yep, Black Chrome Nitro is what uh, they name this. Uh, so let's see what it says on the sides here. Locking tap handle, automatic nitro regulator cap, that's where the actual charger goes in. Carry handle, nitro tap technology, which might just mean that it has some kind of, I'm not sure of this, but it might just be uh, that it has a, an aeration or creaming function the way a stout beer tap does. Um, internal double filtration. I think that's referring to the method they recommend you use for making the nitro coffee, um, which, if I remember correctly, involves uh, what is often referred to as a beer sock. Uh, I'm sorry, a coffee sock, not a beer sock. Uh, coffee sock is basically a sock-like filter that you fill with grounds and then you just pour water over it and let it soak in a, a larger amount of water and that's how they make their nitro coffee using this keg. Um, I'm not going to say I'm always going to use their method because I also own an OXO cold brew coffee maker um, which makes a cold brew concentrate and I will uh, likely, once I use up all the supplies that this comes with, uh, simply put my own cold brew coffee concentrate into the keg uh, on its own. Uh, okay, so double walled, vacuum sealed, stainless steel. Uh, you know, it's like any other insulated mug or keg. It's a dual chamber uh, insulated item. So what do we have in the contents included? One 12 cup UKEG Nitro, uh, four coffee filter bags, those are the coffee socks that I mentioned, uh, one coffee funnel, one serving mat, which is nice, I don't remember that actually being mentioned uh, in the original Kickstarter, but that will basically catch drips, so that's quite nice. Uh, one protective bag, so I guess sort of like a carrying bag, and a manual. Although the manual was already outside the box, uh, but maybe there's another one in there. And what does it say on the back here? Upgrade your morning routine and bask in the comfort and delight of the perfect nitro cold brew experience at your fingertips. Soak it, uh, soak it in and enjoy. Uh, one of the reasons why I bought this was because another option that uh, people who make their own homebrew have is to build what's called a kegerator, which is basically a mini fridge that you put your nitro coffee into a keg within the mini fridge and then you have an actual beer tap coming out of the top. Um, and 
Um, even though I might have room for that, it's a lot of work and a lot of money to put together. And this, through the Kickstarter, only cost me $159. Um, and I think it's going to retail uh, for a bit more than that, and possibly upwards of $199. I'll double check that though, I don't want to misspeak. Um, Okay, uh, enjoy a cup of nitro cold brew with friends or hoard it for yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more likely. My girlfriend and I both drink nitro coffee, but I'm not sure I know any of my friends who do. Uh, the choice is yours, but sharing is caring after all. Isn't that sweet? Uh, let's see, ample volume to host brunch or keep cold brew on tap for days. Um, regarding that comment, most cold brew will keep for two weeks in the refrigerator. Um, now because this is pressurized and sealed up, I don't know if it's going to say you can store it longer, but I guess we'll find out as we go through the instructions. Uh, brew, store, and pour the best nitro cold brew whenever and wherever you want with the only professional grade tool for the at-home barista. All right, well, that's a lot of praise and promise for itself, but let's see what we actually have in the box. It's not taped shut, but it's giving me a bit of grief getting the tab out. Okay, cardboard, more cardboard. Let's lift this out. Oh, wait, there's a piece right here on top. That would appear to be the coffee funnel that was described on the side of the box as one of the included parts. Looks like it's made out of silicone. Looks like that's just their logo, their Growler Works logo, imprinted on the side, embossed even. Set that aside. Okay, that's just cardboard piece here. Oh, it is already wrapped up in its carry bag. It is okay. 10-pack of coffee filters. These are the, the coffee socks, as I call them. Um, and the box says four coffee filter bags, but I got 10. That could be a result of the uh, stretch goals. Stretch goals in Kickstarter basically means that if they get enough people to back a project and raise enough money, then they include additional bonuses with the product um, beyond what was originally promised. So we're lifting that out. Here is the drip tray, which would just sit in front of the keg. And I only see more cardboard inside the box here. So that's all there is. Growler Works, Portland, Oregon. Nothing printed on the other side. It's just a drawstring bag. Still nice. If you want to make sure that when you're not using it, the keg is protected from getting possibly scratched. Okay, so here is the actual keg. Um, they call it black chrome. Um, it's sort of a gunmetal-ish color, what I think is often referred to as gunmetal, um, which is kind of a, a dark silvery color. It's pretty sharp looking. Here's the tap, of course, for when you want to dispense. 
looks like it will bend in either direction. Actually, it's probably this way to dispense, to dispense and flip back uh, to be in a locking position. Um, on the top here, we have the actual screw top of the keg, and it has basically an extra knob here that it looks like you turn it to uh, all the way over to infuse, which I assume is what pierces the nitrogen cartridge and uh, puts it into your finished product. And then you turn it, you turn it over to this pour area to actually dispense. And let's see if there's anything inside here. I wouldn't expect there to be. Yes, there are a couple silica gel packets, which is fine with me. Honestly, whenever I open something that has these silica gel packets, I save these because uh, uh, they're actually good for a lot of things. Um, such as if you drop your phone into uh, water. A lot of people will use rice to dry out their phone. Uh, silica gel packets work even better and they won't leave your phone smelling like rice. Um, so I save these any chance I get. I also put these into a fire safe that I own uh, because fire safes uh, have kind of a nasty side effect on whatever papers you put in them. They become soggy. It seems somewhat uh, counterintuitive, but um, sealed up in a uh, airtight uh, fire safe uh, somehow builds up moisture. And then your documents and whatever else you have in there can get all warped and, and even moldy. Um, so that's another reason why I keep these. Anyway, uh, that is all we have in the box. Um, so I will give a quick read of the instructions here. Let's see what it says. Uh, important notes for your safety and optimal performance. Do not use UKEG with liquids above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, this is cold brew we're making in it, so it wouldn't make sense to do that anyway. Do not open sleeve when cartridge contains pressure. That makes a lot of sense as well. You don't want it exploding in your face. Do not turn off pressure when you keg is full. Doing this does not save nitro gas. Do not turn off pressure when you keg is full. Okay, well, I guess we'll get more into that later. Do not use abrasive materials or metal polish on coatings. Uh, that is obviously in reference to cleaning the product. Um, I wonder if that means uh, whether you can or can't use something like Barkeeper's Friend, which I know a lot of people swear by when it comes to cleaning their um, stainless steel items. Uh, lastly, do not put in dishwasher, hand wash only. That, of course, is going to be Real fun to do because, well, you can't really put your hand in there to hand wash it, so you're going to need some kind of bottle brush, uh, I would think, in order to uh, clean this out completely. Uh, warning, do not put hot water in the UKEG Nitro. Using hot water in the UKEG can result in serious injury and or damage to the product. I think that's self-explanatory. Installing the nitro gas cartridge before filling, oops, ensure dial is in off position. That's what this O there is on the dial. Uh, or at least I assume that's what that O is. Uh, charge cap. So what they're doing here is they are taking this sleeve here and they are putting a 
nitro charger. Oh, okay, interesting. I think I see already what that extra little item was. Um, inside here is a little rubber gasket, which I think might be what this other extra little piece was that I mentioned from the other baggie of parts. So that's, that's interesting. Okay. All right. So, um, basically what you do is you insert a nitro cartridge into this, and then you screw it on. And doing so, just like, uh, usually this is outside of a, um, this kind of thing is outside of a uh, whipping cream charger, um, where the act of screwing it into place pushes the cartridge into the part that pierces it and releases the pressure. Uh, let's see. Charge cap. Tighten sleeve quickly and firmly. Sleeve does not need to bottom out. A quick puff of gas is normal. Um, other tips. Turn on pressure right away after filling. After dispensing, use remaining gas to flush UKEG. For best performance, we recommend Growler Works brand nitro gas. Well, of course they do because they want to sell you more of these. Um, can't blame them. You know, they're in the business to make money. That being said, um, these are, from what I understand, standard N2O uh, cartridges um, that uh, are found in other similar products. And uh, let's see what uh, is in here. The other side is taped shut, but this has a tab on it on the bottom here, so I'm just going to open it from here. And if you hear any other weird sounds, that is uh, either my cat or my girlfriend's dog making noise. Um, so yeah, it's a completely generic looking uh, nitro cartridge. Nothing special about it. Um, each one is 16 gram, 16 grams of nitro. All right, continuing with the instructions, the cap, the dial controls, the dial controls the pressure inside the UK, turn to infuse for nitro infusion, exactly as I had predicted. So you would turn this knob all the way over to infuse and then turn to pour for best performance while pouring and storing. So you're just going to leave it in this pour position when you have it uh, storing your coffee. Uh, the tap. Here's the tap, the locking tap. Fold the tap handle back to lock. That is the current locked position. Pull forward to pour and enjoy. Pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, those are the basics. So let's see what else we have here. You know, honestly, I thought I was supposed to get some actual coffee with it, and I didn't see that in the box. Um, so I could be wrong about that. I will have to double check the Kickstarter. Uh, notes itself. Brewing the nitro cold brew, fill two bags. Oh, two bags. So you're going to use two of these at a time. So there's basically five batches worth of nitro coffee in this in this ten pack of coffee filters, which I guess uh, goes two to one with the uh, nitro chargers. It would use two <gasps> coffee. Filters, pardon my uh, my intestine, my uh, stomach gas there. Uh, two of the coffee filters and one of the chargers for each batch of coffee that you make. Okay, so 
What it says here is fill two of the bags with 60 grams, about three quarter cup of coarse ground coffee. When you're making cold brew coffee, you want it to be really coarse coffee and um, uh, pretty much like French press. French press coffee uses a very coarse ground. Uh, tie a knot with the bag strings. Place both bags in the U keg, not facing upward. K N O T, facing upward. Fill with water to the brew line. It's approximately one and a quarter liters. So let's see what the deal is there with that. Somewhere inside the keg is a fill line. Okay. Um, you may not be able to see it on the camera. I'll try to get up to you here. But you can sort of see inside here, you can see a little line there inside the keg. That is likely the fill line. And that line appears on both sides of the keg. Okay. Uh, place in the refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours. That is the same amount of time recommended for the OXO cold brew maker that I use. Um, and uh, I usually go 18, right in the middle. Um, then uh, after you've let it sit in the refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours, pull out the bags, add additional water to the fill line. So here's the thing about cold brew. When you make cold brew, it is highly concentrated. Um, and generally you're going to cut the, the uh, concentrate, at least this is how it is with the, uh, the OXO. You use about two ounces of concentrate and add a two to one or three to one ratio of water. So you would add another four or six ounces of water, depending on how strong you like the coffee, um, in order to have what they consider a full cup of coffee with their cold brew concentrate. So here you're basically uh, doing that by adding extra water to the keg after you remove the bags that have the grounds in them. Step six, charge cap with a fresh nitro gas cartridge. Tighten the cap on the UKEG nitro, turn dial to infuse. Then shake, this is step seven, shake for one minute to infuse the nitro gas into the cold brew. Then turn the dial to pour and serve and enjoy. Pro tips for a stronger cold brew, use more coffee. That makes sense. Each bag can hold up to one cup. Brew longer, up to 24 hours, or in step three, fill with water above the fill line. This leaves less dilution water to add later. Uh, interesting. Um, so here's the other thing about the way they make the coffee. And there are other uh, cold brew makers on the market that do this where particularly when you're using a sock or a smaller filter inside a larger water container. Um, I, it, I doubt that they get as strong, in my opinion, as the OXO coffee does, because the OXO coffee, you're pouring the water directly into the grounds. There is no extra space between the grounds and the water where there is no grounds making contact with the water. It's full immersion of the grounds. Um, whereas a system like this, or you may have seen a product called Body Brew, uh, where the grounds are in a smaller container with more water around it, not making contact with the grounds. That, that, that's my impression of it, at least. Um, so this will probably not be as strong as the concentrate that comes out of the OXO. What I don't like about using the OXO 
is that you lose about half the water you put into it. Uh, you are not expected to squeeze out the extra water or actually actually coffee from the coffee grounds when you're using uh, some of these other uh, brew systems. Um, you just let the water, the, the coffee, the brewed coffee filter out of it, uh, dispense out of it into a carafe in the case of the OXO. Um, and the wet grounds that remain, you throw away. Uh, even though you may start with 32 ounces or even 40 ounces of water, uh, in the end you get about 16 to 20 ounces of completed concentrate uh, using the OXO system. So it's kind of a waste of water, but it's also stronger. So a lot of people think that the OXO makes the tastiest uh, cold brew out there. Uh, other similar systems are the toddy. Uh, the toddy is very popular. Uh, there's another one like the toddy, I forget what it's called, but uh, um, they are uh, very popular. Uh, but of those, those types, the OXO is said to make uh, the tastiest coffee. All right, cleaning your UKEG. After each use, turn off the gas, remove the cap, and rinse with warm water, less than 120 degrees. I'm gonna have to be careful of that because the hot water in my house is actually very hot. I'm quite sure it's hotter than 120. So I need to make sure that uh, when I clean this, I don't use water that's too hot. Rinse the UK with warm water. Repeat two to three times until clean. Install the cap. Use remaining nitro gas to flow water through the cap, through the tap, and then close the tap. Discharge remaining nitro gas by turning the dial and venting. Remove and recycle gas cartridge. Allow to dry by pouring out remaining water. Store cap off and tap open to dry in a dry place. Store with cap off and tap open in dry place. Okay. For a more thorough cleaning, fill with warm water under 120 degrees and one cleaning tablet. Well, I don't know what they mean by cleaning tablets because I did not seem to get any uh, with the pack. Uh, just the the filter bags and the chargers. Uh, nothing about cleaning tablets. That might be yet another product that they are selling themselves. Uh, let's see. Fill with warm water 120 and one cleaning tablet. Cap and shake well. Baking soda is a, sub is a suitable substitute for the cleaning tablet but I noticed they don't tell you how much baking soda to use. Uh, step two, install cap, charge briefly with leftover nitro gas, flow water through tap and close tap. Let's hit 10 minutes, open tap until pressure runs out. Step three, remove the nozzle for cleaning and drying. Rinse, make sure parts inside nozzle remain intact and uh, they misspelled nozzle there, but I won't hold that against them. Uh, basic UKEG maintenance, changing the tap handle. Use a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench provided with new handle. So this, if you're removing, oh, the tap handle, this tap handle, sorry. If for whatever reason you need to replace this, uh, then they uh, give you a new one, they, uh, or they give you an Allen wrench to fit it. Loosen set screw on handle and pull straight up. Do not twist. Install a compatible handle in reverse order. Caring for your UKEG's color finish, the nice dark chrome gun metal. Um, it feels a little rough, actually. I noticed some spots in it that I feel kind of like it's snagging my skin. I don't know if you can hear that. Not rough. Rough. Um, the surface and color of your UKEG is a 
durable coating that is bonded to the stainless steel bottle in a thin layer. Your coated UKEG should not corrode. For best results when cleaning, please follow instructions below. To clean the surface, gently wash with soap and water or mild detergents. To remove spots, discoloration, or minor blemishes, gentle rubbing with a soft cloth and water is recommended. Do not use polishing compounds or abrasive pads to polish the color surfaces. Spot cleaning this way can remove the finish, which can later lead to corrosion. That makes perfect sense. Polishing with compounds can completely remove the bonded coating layer and expose the stainless steel beneath. The UKEG's finish, while strong, is not impervious to scratching, so if you want it to look nice, treat it nice. And by that, I would assume, use your storage bag. Uh, cartridge seal replacement. So that is the part that I mentioned before that appears to be in the end of the cap here, um, which does indeed look like this small part that goes in there. Oh, and this multi-tool, um, it does indeed look like it is made to fit these various parts of the keg. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and open this up. I'm not going to actually use it to remove anything. Um, with that being said, um, yeah, here's the tap mount, and that fits right into the grooves of the fitting. So that's actually really nice that they did that. Just fit it over slide it over the grooves, and boom, oops, it fits right in place, trust me on that. So that's quite nice that they included that, that tool, the UK tool, quite nice. That shows they care for their product, I think. Very nice. Okay, let's seal that back up so I don't lose the other spare part. Okay, uh, let's see, so it says to squeeze the tabs, there are these old tabs on the side here that you use to uh, remove that. Inspect the cartridge seal for cracks and defects, replace it if needed. Note orientation when removing. So there are two specific ends to this little piece. Um, they do look, well, I don't know, but, oh, I see, yeah, um, the grommet on one side is slightly smaller than on the other, so you need to make sure that that gets inserted in the proper way when replacing that piece. Reinstall a retainer and seal, push retainer down until both tabs click outward. Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, inspect periodically. Make sure the retaining the retaining tabs are fully pushed out and seated properly. The cap O-ring should be tight and smooth. So yes, there is a rubber O-ring around this. Um, so that would appear to be a part that might need to get replaced in the future. Make sure O-ring is installed as shown and free of damage. That is... Ah, there are two O-rings. One is on the larger part of the cap and one is on the inner part of the cap. Uh, that O-ring seals the uh, 
actual nitrogen cartridge there. Now there's this other part here on the end of it. Um, that may just be a kind of like a regulator for the gas escaping. Not sure. Um, so far I haven't seen any reference to uh, that piece right there. Uh, pressure off is counterclockwise, just as I expected. Uh, you line up the dot with the large circle, and that is pressure off. Helpful tips. Replace nitro gas cartridge after every use. Any remaining gas can be used to flush your U-keg with clean water. See cleaning on page 5. Uh, Long-term storage of your UKEG with a cartridge installed will reduce cartridge seal life. Remove cartridges promptly after discharge. The cartridge seal is designed to be resilient but may be damaged from over-tightening or sharp cartridges. Your UKEG came with one extra cartridge seal and more can be purchased at GrowlerWorks.com. So there's the reference to that extra piece that came in the baggie. The cap o-ring is designed to be resilient but may become damaged or loose from over tightening. Replacement cap seals are available at GrowlerWorks.com. Optional, applying a light coat of silicone grease to o-rings will extend their lifetime. And guess where you can get that silicone grease? That's correct, you can get it at GrowlerWorks.com. Warranty information on the back page of the manual. The UK comes with a limited one-year warranty from date of receipt of a new purchase from an authorized retailer. Please read the full warranty at growlerworks.com slash pages slash warranty. Questions or concerns, email or call. Register your UKEG. Ensures that your one-year warranty is properly applied and it has the address GrowlerWorks.com slash registration, and there's also a QR code, which I assume goes to that address as well. So there is the unboxing of the UKEG Nitro. Um, I may do another video when doing my very first batch. We shall see. I'm not tightening that up very much. Um, there was no mention about using this. I wonder if this coffee, um, what they call a coffee funnel, is used for pouring your grounds into the sock, um, into the, the filter bag. Um, that would seem to make some sense. Um, so I guess I could put on the replacement Kickstarter exclusive tap handle. So it came with a very tiny Allen wrench. I can see that it goes in the back here and we'll just lightly, actually I should turn it this way. There we go. Loosened up, came right off. This actually feels um, more sturdy than this. Um, I was a little wary of this. I thought that had it been made of plastic that it would have been very breakable. Um, and yet it's this piece that actually feels a little uh, lighter. Um, not sure which style I like more. Um, this is of course a more classic appearance. Um, but uh, I'll just set that into the other box and put this into place. Let's get to loosen that up. Hmm, it's not really going on. Okay, well, um, that just came right out. Not sure why 
the custom handle is not really up oh, there it goes all right now let's uh still got the screw on the end of the allen wrench here i'm gonna try to screw that on Light pressure. I don't like to over tighten things. Just as soon as I feel a bit of resistance. And there you have the finished Kickstarter edition. Unfortunately, the light entering the window hopefully did not ruin all these shots. But there is the completed Kickstarter edition UKEG Nitro. Um, something else you can see here that wasn't really talked about in the manual, unfortunately, is the actual pressure gauge. Um, let's see what that actually says. I think that says infuse. Yep. So. Um, the gauge goes up to 15 pounds per square, uh, per square inch, I assume is what that means. And then beyond that is an infuse, uh, labeled mark. And then of course, when you pour, you're going to reduce that, uh, that pressure down. Um, this little window here, I think indicates how much coffee is in the keg. Um, so you can tell when you're running out. And I believe their beer kegs do the same. Um, the label inside this, or rather the, the gauge itself, it's a little crooked compared to the keg itself. Um, I'll try not to let that bother me. Hopefully it being crooked does not mean it's gonna have a bad reading. Um, but I guess uh, we'll see what happens there. But it is, it is not uh, flush with the, uh, the rest of the keg, with the bottom of the keg. Um, the right side is higher than the left on there. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, so that is the finished unboxing of the UKEG Nitro. Another video may come later when I do my first batch. I hope you enjoyed the video. Fellow Kickstarters out there, um, let me know what your experience was. Did you notice anything in your box that I got that you didn't get or you got that I didn't get? Um, I honestly thought there was supposed to be more in the package, but I'm gonna go review the Kickstarter page and uh, see what it says about that. I thought there were going to be more chargers and possibly even a sample of coffee. Um, but I will uh, perhaps add to this video uh, once I find that out. And uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you enjoy your UKEGs.